Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to take in a beaded bodice on a wedding gown. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. Now there are two most common ways that I have seen uh, for altering a gown that is covered in beads and you need to take up the bodice. Um, so I'm going to show you both of those ways and I'm going to show you my personal favorite way. It's a little faster, much neater, um, and I think it'll save you a little time. Now, first off, we need to understand that both ways you're going to be clearing off some beads pretty much if you can draw some invisible lines with your mind as far as where those new seam lines are going to be you're going to want to clear away most of those beads through that area you guys have asked me before about clearing away beads and what's the most efficient way i usually do it two different ways um, one as you see me doing now with the nippers i like to just snip at the threads at the base of the larger stones and try to clear out all the larger stones first with the nippers and then I go in later with the razor and shave off the smaller seed beads. That's normally the process that I take. Okay, now let's look at the two different ways that you can deal with the beads for taking this dress in. Number one, on the top half of this bodice along the new seam allowance, let's just clear away all of the beads. Number two, on the lower half, let's just clear away only the big stones. That's actually the way that I prefer to do it. Um, I know that the first way is actually the most common way. That's usually what I see seamsters do is clear away for the whole new seam allowance and then they repopulate the beads when they're done. Um, but I prefer just clearing away the big stones and then I'll show you how I deal with sewing through that in just a minute. When I'm done clearing away the beads, I like to keep them. So I just gather them all up. Some of them will need to be put back on the gown and some of them I just don't want to go to waste. So I'm gonna put them in a jar together because we know they match this project. Now for the part of actually taking in the dress. So I'm gonna take my razor and just kind of skim off this boning that's on the inside, I'm gonna lay it to the side. If the boning is kind of worn out, starting to curl up, looks a little frayed and exhausted, I'll throw it away and cut a new one. This one's okay. So I'm gonna just set that to the side and I'm gonna make sure that the top of the dress, the top of the bodice is completely set free. The old seam allowances are still kind of caught in the understitching. So I need to release that and I need to release the understitching with the razor as well. This way I can work without the ends of my seams being bound up. Thank you. 
The first seam that I'm going to take in is the lining. I'm just going to lay it flat here and sew down the new size that it needs to be. I'm making sure with the fingers on the underside with my right hand, I'm making sure that the fabric isn't rolling or wrinkled or anything under there. And I'm just kind of, you know, I keep saying it. I don't know how else to describe it, but I just kind of do this visual overlay of where the new seam needs to be. I don't mark it with pencils or anything like that. I just kind of picture it. And I know that might be frustrating if that's not how you do it. There are other ways you can mark it, um, but I just kind of picture it. So here I'm starting on the shell layer, taking that in. So I'm using a little bit more force, you can tell with my fingertips. I'm going to go more slowly, and I'm going to make sure I'm kind of nudging any little beads that may be along that new seam allowance. I'm kind of nudging them over to the left to make sure that they don't get hit with the needle. Um, will they get hit with a needle still? Yes, sometimes they will, but that's okay. Um, I need to change my needle several times a day anyways. I have a case of needles beside me, so if I break a needle, it's fine. And I do wear glasses, um, so that helps a lot with the safety feature of that. So I'm just going to keep sewing. Now I'm down into the part where I only cleared away the large stones. So what I'm doing, you can't really tell, but I'm lifting with my right leg. I'm lifting the presser foot just a little bit to release the tension, to release the pressure from that presser foot so that when I go over the seed beads, you can see my presser foot just kind of rolling right over them, just goes right through them. Yes, sometimes you'll break a needle, um, but a lot of times you won't. I'm using a size 18 needle. Um, and now I'm going to open the old seam and you'll be able to see the difference, uh, here at the top, there's not very many beads in there, right? Cause we cleared them all away. As we get to this bottom half, you're going to start to see that there are those smaller little clusters of beads that I did not clear away and they're just fine in there. I'm just going to trim them away now from the inside because we don't want that extra bulk in the dress. And I also want to completely clear it away from the seam because I'm getting ready to make a second pass. I don't want to leave that one pass where my tension wasn't right um, because, you know, the, the side seams may pull a little bit on the threads. So I'm going to make a second pass of stitches that are going to be nice and tight. And I'm just going to go over that previous seam that I just put in and any other little seed beads that may have been encroaching on that seam. I'm going to clear those away as well. Some people like more than clear away from the new seam, like leave an extra inch of no beads for fear of striking it with the needle. I don't do that obviously. So here I'm going back through with my second row of stitches just right on top of that first row nice and uh, clean with the nice tension that we need and that's all for that part of the alteration now i need to open up the lining side we had the old seam that still needs to be released and this dress has a elastic belt on the inside for some reason I always choose to move it now <laughs> I don't know why but I don't like to move it when I'm changing the size of the dress so I'm just gonna release up a little higher where it needs to be in the seam nudge it up there, sew it down to the seam allowance. And then I'm going to go back through and re-sew over that seam, making sure that that elastic waistband is nice and straight. You need to move that waistband up when your bride is more short-waisted than the dress was originally made to be. So that's what I'm doing. You don't want that band to be hitting on her hip because that's going to want to pull the dress up on her all the time. You want it to be wherever her natural waist is. 
So now I'm putting in the relief snips so that her waist can have a nice curvature to it. And now I'm going to put the boning back in. This boning originally just had the one stitch going down there. One row of stitches holding it in place. Sometimes there's two. This dress has a lot of boning on the lining layer though. Um, and the outer layer here is super sturdy. So the one row of stitches is going to be just fine. Now, finally, I'm just going to sew the top of this back together, the top of the bodice. I'm going to make sure that the little tippy edges of my seam allowance is tucked there on the angle that I'm sewing. I'm not going to want to pull them up where they'll get pulled funny as the bride moves around. Now what I'm gesturing to here is that I'm going to need to go back in and straighten out this line of beads that goes along the top edge of the gown. So that'll need to be straightened out. I'm not going to get into hand sewing beadwork with this video. I do have a video coming up of how to do beadwork and it will be quite extensive. I'm super excited and it involves a collaboration. You're also going to want to go ahead and do your under stitching. Now look at where I'm gesturing here. There's no beads missing. This is the way that I like to sew it. Now up here where I'm gesturing where that flower is, you can see all in that area. There's a lot of beadwork that needs to be repopulated. Um, it's just not worth it to me, guys. I really would rather sacrifice a broken needle and not have to redo all of that beadwork um, than I would to ultra clear it away and have to spend an hour or so fixing the beadwork. Now I'm going to show you how I put in my hanger loops. Um, when I have a dress that's going to have this beadwork that can kind of cover over things, I like to just lay it across here, make the loop face toward the bust and I like to stitch in the ditch and it's also stitching right through the uh, boning that's in there. It's tucked down in there nice and neat so it doesn't usually make a little surprise appearance on the wedding day. So that's how I like to do my hanger loops. I do have an entire video about that. Also here I am going through with the hypo cement. I'm just gluing down any of the roots of these threads with this clear cement so they won't uh, have other beads come loose. And of course the final step to this project is to go back in and repopulate all the beads, make her look good as new. Again, I have a video coming up that is specifically about beading, so hit subscribe and stay tuned and I'll be happy to share that with you. I hope this has helped you. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I do try to be quite active in the comments. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. And please share this on social media. It helps so much. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But... There's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.